Hey everyone, so today we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this movement strategy here and explore what's going on and why you might use this strategy during the treatment and rehab process. So when we're working with the knee joint, we certainly need to appreciate the knee within the context of the rest of the lower limb structure. But we're going to keep the focus here to the local interaction between the femur and the tibia and the patella, of course. And that's sort of the first thing to consider here is considering the knee as a reflection of the interaction between the femur, the tibia and the patella, not just as a knee. Because if we can use this segmental based analysis, what the, the segmental based analysis does is it opens up a lot more options for us to load and distribute forces around the knee joint. And one local feature that we often see clinically in people experiencing movement limitations at the knee is an increase in the co-contraction of the thigh muscles, the quads and the hamstrings at lower intensities. Because this co-contraction at lower intensities often reflects a top-down protective strategy from the nervous system to reduce the muscle length and joint angle changes between the femur and the tibia. And this reduction in relative movement between the femur and the tibia actually helps to simplify the neurological control of the knee joint because when there's less muscle length and joint angle changes, that means there's less proprioceptive information, less proprioceptive feedback to the nervous system to process when there's more co-contraction there. And you'll see this movement feature, this co-contraction feature across the research, not just in the knee, but in other joint interactions as well. Now in this strategy here, we're adding load to the distal hamstrings as we teach the tibia and the femur to move relatively to one another, or said another way, to express dissociation. And we're digging the heel into the chair, scooping the pelvis up so it hovers from the table about two or three inches, and maintaining that as we lead with the tibia and let the femur follow. So when we first move the tibia into external rotation, the femur is going to maintain its position, so it's going to bias relative internal rotation, and then the femur is going to follow. And then we're going to internally rotate the tibia as the femur stays biased towards more abduction and external rotation. And then we're going to work through the sequence six times in each direction. So one of the key reasons this is such an important feature is because we want our clients to be able to express those association qualities even while they're managing load and handling load through knee flexion in this case because it adds a greater level of challenge to the movement. Okay? Because when we step out into the real world, we have to manage those forces as we express those association qualities. And oftentimes during the rehab process and treatment process, there's a little bit too much focus placed on expressing those dissociation qualities in unloaded positions and at lower intensities. And then we can't access those dissociation qualities when we step out into the real world and our body is challenged a lot more so. Okay, So you can use this this movement strategy as part of a progression if the client needs more local work, but always be sure to integrate this strategy with the rest of the lower limb.